This situation is an OMG. Oh my God, you're gonna walk up thinking you're gonna have a standard bunker shot and you can't believe the bad luck. The ball's sitting close to the back edge of the bunker where the slope is descending into the bunker. I've seen far too many of these shots turn into doubles or worse. Let me show you how to navigate this to the best of your ability. Okay, we got uh, ball away, maybe three feet from the back edge of the bunker. The edge of the bunker is some foot and a half to two feet above the golf ball. This is that oh my god situation that I was talking about. Uh, most people are going to step in here, they're going to have their ball middle or uh, center of their stance, they're going to make a backswing and start to catch the back lip of the bunker on their backswing and invariably they try that technique with the ball forward like this, they'll also catch the lip coming in and if they don't catch the lip coming in they start catching sand really far back behind the back edge of the ball because this sand is so much closer to us. So there's some adjustments that clearly are necessary to make. One of those adjustments is conceptual. When you're faced with this situation the last thing you should be trying to do is or the last expectation you should have is you can get this ball coming out high and soft. The objective here is to, to survive. The objective here is to make sure that you have a putt as your next shot, or sometimes even a chip as your next shot. The last thing that we want is bladed over the green into whatever is over there, or bladed into the lip in front. So, what are the adjustments? We need to understand that since this sand is much closer to us, we need to move the ball back in our stance and we need to get our pressure left. All of a sudden, what we've done is we've taken the potential for that arc to bottom out back here, and if I just continue to do this with my club, wave it backwards and forwards, its proximity to that back slope moves further and further away from that back slope the more I get my pressure to the left. So that's step one. Step two is we got to get down low. It's an awkward stance. We got to stay at address and through impact low into our lead leg. So it's almost like doing a single leg RDL or a single leg squat here. Uh, last piece is we've got to be abrupt with the arc shape. We've got to hinge up steep, which is why, similar to the buried bunker shot or, or a buried bunker shot, I'm going to try and abruptly hinge that club up and then thump down some one to three inches behind uh, the back edge of the ball. This time I'm going to do it with fairly neutral to slightly lofted. Maybe if square was zero, I'm going to turn 20 degrees of loft on the face, turning that club face a little bit more to the sky, and then I'm going to stay low. Similar to um, if you've already seen the video on a downhill pitch, that round racker, it's got to be the same technique that we use here. So success is what? It's getting it out on the green. We're going to be heavy into our lead leg. We've got to be back with our ball position. And sometimes it's even necessary to drop this right foot away because it feels like the more I flex, the more the right thigh is in the way of the swing. Let's give it a shot. There's my landing window. If I'm just good enough in landing it somewhere in that three inch window there, somewhere in that two inch window there with enough speed staying low, it should get out. There it is, it's out, headed to the back edge. I've got now a 12 to 15 foot putt for power or birdie, whatever the situation. And I've taken this otherwise potential round wrecker and turned it into an opportunity to salvage that breakthrough round. This one drives pro golfers crazy, but by using the concepts we just covered, you'll turn this situation into a wow situation for those that you're playing with.